Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll study the diaphragm. So what is the diaphragm? Well, the diaphragm is the chief muscle of respiration and it is a musculotendinous partition that separates the thorax and abdominal cavity from each other. The diaphragm lies in the inferior aperture of your thoracic cavity. And today we'll exactly study the parts of diaphragm, its origin, its insertion. To begin with, it is uh, important to know that the diaphragm is basically dome shaped. The dome shape is when it's relaxed. Whenever you are about to inspire, the dome becomes flattened and this is when the diaphragm is contracting. The flattening of the dome is so that there is space provided for the lungs to fill up. Let's begin talking about the origin of the diaphragm. So how does it originate? The diaphragm is basically originating in a circumferential manner from the entire lower part of your thoracic cage. So as you all know, the entire thoracic cage is formed anteriorly by the sternum on either side by the ribs and posteriorly by the thoracic vertebra. Now we are talking about the diaphragm, hence we are talking about the inferior aperture which is going to start with your xephoid process. So the sternal origin of your diaphragm is from the by two fleshy slips posterior to the xiphoid process. The xiphoid process of the sternum is basically a tapering end of your body of the sternum right below it. Then it has a second origin which is from the ribs. This is called as the costal origin. The costal origin is occurring from the lower six ribs with their costal cartilages. Finally, the third part of its origin is mostly lying in your vertebrae. This is known as the lumbar part of its origin. So the lumbar part of diaphragm's origin consists of four important areas. The first is the medial lumbocostal arch the lateral lumbocostal arch, the right crust of the diaphragm, and the left crust of the diaphragm. Basically, medial lumbocostal arch has another name. It is medial arcuate ligament. It is very important to know that this is medial, not median. And this is the lateral arcuate ligament. And there is another thing called the median arcuate ligament. So median arcuate ligament. Take note that this is median and this is medial so do not confuse with that. So let's start beginning to understand the lumbar part of the origin which is a little more confusing than the other parts. We had the 12th thoracic vertebra is where the, the thoracic cavity ends. Below the 12th thoracic vertebra are the lumbar vertebra. So today we'll talk about the lumbar vertebra because that's where most of its origin is taking place from. So L1, L2 and L3. Let's talk about the fact that diaphragm is divided into a right and a left crust. Suppose this is the right side and this is the left side. The right crust goes below and gets attached to the lumbar vertebra 1, 2 and 3. And then there is the left crust. The left crust is smaller than the right crust. It is attaching to the vertebra 1 and 2 only. The medial margins of both the right crust and the left crust, they meet in the median plane and they join together the median arcuate ligament. And I am talking about this ligament right now. All right, the median arcuate ligament. Now let's talk about the lumbocostal arches. Let's zoom in a little on the lumbar vertebra. So if this is the lumbar one vertebra, all right? What happens is the medial lumbocostal arc is basically, it is a tendinous arch which is lying in the fascia covering the upper part of the psoas major muscle. Remember the names of the muscles. While the lateral lumbocostal arc is arising from the fascia covering the upper part of the quadratus lumborum muscle. So these muscles are of significance. You should remember their names. So what happens is, as you all know, that the vertebra consists of the body and the, the transverse processes. The medial arcuate ligament or the medial lumbocostal arc is basically going to arise from the body of the L1 vertebra and gets attached to the transverse process of the L1 vertebra. It has to form an arc. So this is the medial arcuate ligament or the medial lumbocostal arc. Now here is the psoas major muscle on either side. All right. So 
then comes the lateral rhombocostal arc which arises from the transverse process of the L1 vertebra and gets attached to the 12th floating rib and it forms another arch which is more lateral on either side. Other name, the medial arcuate ligament and the lateral arcuate ligament. And here is the quadratus lumborum muscle. This is the medial arcuate ligament or the medial lumbocostal arc. Medially is continuous with the right cross of the diaphragm, which I explained earlier that it was passing and it was attached to the L1, L2 and L3 vertebra. So it goes all the way. This is the right cross of the diaphragm. It goes all the way. The right cross and then here too, the medial arcuate ligament is continuous with the left crust. Here we go. And these two, the two crusts in the their medial fibers uh, get together and form the medial arcuate ligament. And behind the medial arcuate ligament is your first opening of the diaphragm called the aortic opening, first large opening. We'll discuss that later. So this is a little overview of the structure of the diaphragm. Now let's talk about how it gets inserted. The diaphragm gets inserted via the central tendon and the central tendon is trilobar. That means it has one, two and three lobes and it basically the entire circumferential origin meets at the central tendon and gets basically you can say an insertion point of the entire diaphragm. Of note over here is why is the right crust lower than the left crust? The reason is because the right side there is an important organ right beneath the diaphragm and that organ is the liver. On the left side, definitely there is a stomach, but it is more tinier, smaller than the liver. So it is important that right below the diaphragm lie the liver and the stomach. The liver is a larger organ, hence the right crust is longer and also the right side of the dome of the diaphragm is higher than the left sided dome. So that was about the origination and insertion of this muscle. Let's talk about its openings. The diaphragm bears three large openings and we have discussed this earlier. So you can watch my previous video where I discussed the thoracic outlet uh, to know what are the large openings. In the central tendon was the vena cable opening and splitting of the right crust where the, it surrounds the opening called the esophageal opening and finally the aortic opening. But this time let's discuss the smaller openings. So first important part of the smaller opening is that behind the medial arcuate ligament on either side lie the sympathetic chains. Behind the lateral arcuate ligaments lie the subcostal nerves and vessels. The structures that pierce both the crusts of the diaphragm are the lesser and greater splanchnic nerves. Additionally, in the left crust, there is also an additional structure, the hemiazygous vein that pierces the left crust only. Then we have the space of Larry. Space of Larry allows passage or the foramen of Morgagni. It allows the passage of superior epigastric vessels. Thank you so much for watching.